Good morning. I uh, just wanted to go over chi-square again really quickly uh, before you start today's assignment or if you need some help on today's assignment. First of all, the uh, chi-square is set up a little bit more in your favor this time. It's a little bit easier. Um, so I don't want those of you who, who finally got yesterday's or the day before's uh, chi-square figured out to overthink this one. All right, um, so you'll read through this scenario. Basically, you've got these cells that were um, untreated soy roots and these cells that were treated. They were treated with a substance called lectin. And we did our non-treatment and treatment group to try to figure out what was going on here in this field. And you can, you can deal with that part. Um, what I want to focus on is the chi-square and being sure that you can identify cells that are in mitosis. Um, looking at this first slide, um, I put red dots on the cells that I wanted you to count, and it's a total of 50 cells. That just kind of made it a little bit easier. Um, the ones that are in interphase, you can see a clearly defined nucleus, so this is the nucleus. The black spot in the middle is the nucleolus. Where you can see chromosomes is where mitosis is going on. So this is the nucleus. It's not as clearly defined as this one. So this is prophase. Um, metaphase comes after prophase. That's where the chromosomes line up in the center. So these two are in metaphase. Anaphase is where the chromosomes pull apart. So these, uh, this one here is an anaphase. Uh, telophase is where a cell plate's beginning to form between the two and the cells are separating. So you can see here, I've got one dot, um, the cells becoming two cells, so that's late telophase. Then you've got this other treatment here, and if you look at this slide, you can see that there's a whole bunch more that are undergoing mitosis compared to the other slide. So for example here, you can, you can see the spindle fibers in here. This is a uh, telophase. The cells are, or the nuclei are beginning to reform here. So this is earlier telophase than say this one, which is late telophase where you've got the cell wall forming. Uh, here you've got anaphase where the chromosomes are separating, metaphase where they're lining up, prophase where they're becoming visible but you can sort of still see the outline of a nucleus, and then interphase where you can see a very clearly defined nucleus. So I made up some data. Um, don't use this data when you do your problem because I just made it up. I didn't even count. Um, I said for the untreated that uh, in interphase there were 41 and for mitosis there were nine. And really what I would do is just count the ones that were in interphase and then subtract because there's 50 for each. For this lectin treated one, I said that there were 37 in interphase and 13 undergoing mitosis of any one of the phases. So your null hypothesis when we're talking about two different treatments is always going to be that the treatment has no effect on whatever outcome we're looking at. In this instance, we're looking at the rate of mitosis. So the rate of mitosis is equal for both treatments. That's our null hypothesis. The chi-square is going to tell us if that null hypothesis is statistically accurate. So the way you go about working this problem, at least the chi-square part, put your observed, um, your observed, it tells us here, is the lectin treated. We have interphase and mitosis, so the observed were 37 and 13. What I would have expected had I had 50 cells, and I did, I had the same number of cells, so this is just my expected data. You don't have to multiply by percentages. Um, the reason that you had to multiply by percentages for the last chi-square was because these totals were different, okay? So in other words, if I had 50 cells, I would expect them um, to be in this percentage. And since I've already got 50, it's the same number. So then you just take your calculator and you say 41 minus 37 squared, so times itself, and then always divide by the expected. So we're going to divide by 41. That gives me 0.39. And then here I've got 13 minus 9. That difference is 4. Squared is 16. Divide that by 9. 
and that gives me 1.77. Okay, when I add those two together, I get 2.16. That's my chi-square value. And then I'm going to use that critical values table to determine if the... Um, if the data are significantly different. So um, my chi-square value of 2.16 is going to be lower than the critical value. You can use your critical value table from the other day. Um, but since there's one degree of freedom, two categories, so one degree of freedom, the critical value is going to be 3.84. For this one, you're going to write a statement that explains what's going on. So what I'm going to say is that my chi-square value of 2.16 is less than the critical value of 3.84 for one degree of freedom. So when the critical value is higher than your chi-square, then you are going to fail to reject your null hypothesis. Um, in other words, this chi-square doesn't provide you with any evidence that, that those values are statistically different. Maybe it's a low population size. We only had 50 cells. Um, so I'm going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then what I would do is just kind of make a claim about that. You're, you're failing to reject the null hypothesis um, that there is no difference between the two treatments or that lectin affects the rate of mitosis. Now, had my critical or had this value here been 5.16, then I would have said my chi-square value of 5.16 is greater than the critical value of 3.84 for one degree of freedom. I reject the null hypothesis. Lectin does affect the rate of mitosis. So be very careful. Like I said, I made up that data. So I don't really know what the real answers are. You guys figure that out. Let me know if you have any questions.